Welcome to part two of the step-by-step -step tutorial of generating a request from Visual Studio. In this video we will be setting up the test method to actually call the request that we created in the previous video. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to rename this to API just so we don't get confused when we create the tests. Then after we rename it API we're going to save it. It's going to update the class name then we're going to drag it into the request folder. The next thing is we're going to update the namespace to account for the new location. Next, we're going to add a new folder. This new folder is going to be for our API tests that we write. Inside that API test folder that we just created, we're going to create a new item. And we're going to keep it class. We're going to rename the file tests. Click Add. Next, after the new class is created, we're going to delete all the using statements that we don't need. Make the class public. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a public async task method. We're going to call it test API call. Above it, we're going to add our category. These are part of the end unit framework. Below that, we're going to add the test attribute so we can run it as a test. Uh, inside the category, I'm just going to call it test for this demo purposes. Inside our public async task, we're going to instantiate our API class that we created. Um, again, this is the class that holds our requests. So we're going to do API, API equals new API. Uh, you'll notice some squigglies here. To correct that, you would add a using statement at the top that would call the namespace. Visual Studio seems to be confused a little bit by this. API is a pretty generic call name, so to fix that, if, it, if adding the using statement doesn't address that, you can add the full name to the API class that you're trying to reach, which is what we'll do here. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to actually do our request. So we're going to do var response equals await api dot test request, which is what our method name is in our API class. And that's it. So now we've created our test method. We want to open up our test explorer. Do that by going to test windows test explorer. Uh, allow that to load. Inside here you'll see the hierarchy for our namespace. So you'll see test API demo. And then our category and then our test method. With that we are going to uh, show how to debug the project to make sure that we're getting a response. So we'll add a breakpoint. To run in debug, we're going to right click and select debug selected tests. So 
we're going to step through here using F11. Um, step past our builder. Right here is where we're going to actually run the git request. Uh, you'll see below in our autos that we have a status code of 200, meaning that the request was successful. We'll run past our content and we'll see the actual response that came back. Now with that we're going to return our context because that's our response that we want. And as you can see now our var response is now the response back from the API. It's always good to debug a test method right after you create it just to make sure that it's doing what we're expecting. Now we're just going to run the test normally. We're going to remove our breakpoint and we'll just run the test. So run selected test and it's finished and that is complete. So now you should have a test method that calls our API class and returns a response.